Welcome to the podcast, Leading and Growing Your Real Estate Business by Coach James Short. This podcast is designed to help you with strategies, insights, and ways to increase sales, build and lead high-performing teams, and ultimately grow your business. Your host, James Short himself, also shares some of his secret sources on how he helps his own clients achieve business growth quickly and easily. James has been coaching those in the real estate and property industry for close to 10 years now, and his clients keep on saying, since working with James, their results have been outstanding, giving them more money, time, and fulfillment. James is offering a free strategy call to those listening to see how he can assist you to take your business to where you want to go. Simply go to jamesshort.com.au forward slash strategy and book in a time today. Now on with the show. Hi and welcome to another edition of Leading and Growing Your Real Estate a Business. This is Coach James Short and welcome to another edition. Wow, pumped, excited. Yee-hoo! Today's guest is the none other, Gabrielle Darcy from Hot Property. That's H-O-T-T property.com.au. Oh my goodness, how best to describe, I call it Gab, how best to describe Gab, Gab to friends, right? Um, utterly dependable, customer focused, inherently curious, supportive, professional, and a joy to work with. Now, Gab runs a property management business, a very successful property management business in around the Newcastle, Lake Macquarie area. She uses her networking skills and admin capability and can manage and maintain and help you make the most of your investment property. Well, we're excited to uh, deep dive into her, her expertise and some of her strategies that she's uh, helping clients through these uncertain times. So uh, let's get her on the show. Gab, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello. Good to have you. Thank you so much for, uh, I know you're super busy. Uh, thank you so much for, for dropping in for, for today's show. That's okay. Thanks for having me. Now you've been running the business now for close to six years now and um, in the industry for for a while, but I want to find out, I want you to share your story of of how you got into the industry, um, what's been your journey up until now and share with the viewers, what's that been like for you? Uh, It's an interesting one because I hadn't worked in the industry before. Rather, I've been on the flip side of property management as um, both a tenant and a landlord. So having my own investment properties when I met my husband, Luke, and um, feeling some frustrations on how things were being managed um, led me and Luke to this grand idea that we would start a property management company and um, together we might, you know, do, he might do some sales and, and I would lead some sort of business in property management so it started very small all those years ago um, I still had a full-time job so I set it up on the side um, while I was on maternity leave at that time wow. and um, and grew the, the business from there with, with referrals and family and friends that's how we started awesome awesome and so if you look at the, the now right where I mean yes the the, the, the Lake Macquarie area Newcastle area but who are the the ideal types of people that you're working with at the moment um, I'm very lucky. I feel like I'm working with a, a great uh, bunch of clients, landlords, like-minded people. And as I said before, so my my intricate little business has grown by referral and word of mouth, which means that the people that come to me, um, they're all you know, really good people with similar values. And so when they pick up the phone and, and most of the people that call me, um, they've already heard about what I'm doing and how I work things and they know it kind of suits them. So um, yeah, the introductions to those people is very good. How much easier is that, right? Like when you just, you don't have to, you know, you, you, your business is based on referrals because you do an amazing job with, and clients are so happy that they're happy to refer. It just makes it easy, doesn't it? Like just, it does. just having the conversation. Yeah, ready to go. Yep, yeah, you're not bringing in other agents to do, you know, quotes. Like, yeah. Just make it happen. I, I don't, I am, I like to say I'm not really a salesperson because I, I haven't ever, you know, gone in, down that path. But I guess it, there's times where I have to become a salesperson to sell my business. Um, it's very comforting when I don't have to do that for me. <laughs> it, 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 it doesn't, it doesn't come naturally. Yeah. Um, 
So I do feel very lucky. As I said, people come to me and I don't have to compete and I don't have to, I can just be myself and that gets things over the line. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. So obviously the journey has had some, some ups and downs, some lefts and rights, some good times and not so good times. But if you look back at the time that you've had the business and if you look at some of the challenges that you've come through and obviously come through the other side, mm -hmm. what are some of those challenges you look back and go, wow, that was a trying times, but I come through. What, what was some of those lessons that you, you, you took from that? Uh, a lot of them would be personal um, challenges that have you see me develop personally into this business person that I didn't know that I was or that I could be. Um, and the personal side of things is obviously having children, um, having young children and balancing that work life um, scenario to, to find your groove and find your momentum. Um, and I've been happy with my slow progression because that's helped me being, as I said, someone who was a bit green in the industry, taking my time, learning how the ropes work and then smashing out, you know, what I had in front of me, um, doing the best possible job that I could with that nice steady flow of business over the, the last couple of years. So the, the challenges have been finding my groove, um, finding the motivation sometimes between sleep deprived and young children. So, um, but I've never, I've, I feel like I've never, I've never sat my business down or put it aside. And as, it's always been a priority there and it's always been my driver. Um, I think that's so true. I mean, for, for a, a mom, a, a wife, a business owner, there's so many hats that you're wearing and it's, and particularly, you know, when, when, when you've got particularly in these current situations and these current times, it's like, it's like, hang on, hang on kids. Hang on, I just got to get to this email. I just got to like, you know what I mean? And it's, yeah. it's a challenge, right? And I think it's, even though it's been a challenge, it's been a massive success of, of what you've created on the business side of things of, of the juggling and managing and, and, and being having those roles, because I think it's, so, I, I personally believe it's so much harder for women to do that juggling act because we're so, you know, the stereotype is got to do this and got to do that, but you've really knocked it out of the park. You've really had some amazing successes. And if you look at some of those successes, if you look back on the, on the, on the, the past years, what are some of those, I mean, running the business with the kids and, uh, as a partner with, with a wife, and blah, blah, blah. That's a success in itself. But there, are there any other standout successes if you think back over the years that you go super proud of that moment? Is there anything like that? Um, there's, there's that point in your business where all of a sudden your brand becomes known. So my, my pink signs or my pink number plate or my car or my logo or whatever, over the last couple of years, people actually start to identify me with that. So um, that's, that point in the market where I, I'm, people are actually talking and they know who I am, which is great. That's a really, that's been a really nice feeling. Um, get, getting to a point on that steady growth path where I'm managing a large portfolio that I think one property manager um, should manage, but I'm doing it more efficiently. So my systems, I'm up, like I'm, I'm on the online with systems and technology and those sorts of things. So that, that took me time as well. So obviously with, you know, building a business and finances, you don't have the money to splash out on all the, the top systems and things that you need. So you have to slowly grow. And um, it's almost like a treat to treat yourself and go, okay, I'm going to subscribe to that or I'm going to use that system or, you know, something that's going to make my life easier. Um, but it also makes my business and what I do more efficient. So there. Love it. They're perfect i like those <laughs> that's so good right because it, it does it's like yes it's an investment but it's also got a return so yes. it's a it's a definitely a win-win and, and you've had some some huge success around that along, yep. along the way now let's go to the current times obviously you know the the industry is going through some ups and downs obviously through the COVID 19 um there's legislation policies this that communications uh, interpretations the whole bit what are you noticing? What are you noticing out there uh, with your with your clients within the market? And I want to get your understanding. What what are you seeing out there at the moment? Uh, my approach at the beginning of this horrible pandemic was um, to kind of not rush into doing things or changing things too quickly mm -hmm. because the advice was changing you know, every day from the government or the health authorities or the real estate institute, um, you know, governing bodies and, and all those sorts of things. So I've been very careful with how I've communicated to both landlords and tenants, but it's it certainly shown me that that communication needs to be there. 
whether you've got really nothing to say at all, it's been important to have that touch point with people. Um, again, looking at systems, changing systems to modify what we're doing, what we can't do, you know, putting back all the routine inspections, um, delving into the world of tenant assisted inspections virtually or doing Zoom calls with people. So um, I found there's all these different things that you can do because I'm on my own and I don't have a team to collaborate with. It has been a little bit um, nerve wracking if, um, if I'm honest. So I've been very conscious of keeping up with, you know, online chat groups, other property management groups, getting advice, seeing what people are doing and just altering from there, but, but not, uh, not immediately so that I can't, you know, something that I can't take back. I'm, I'm making sure what I'm doing is as, you know, per the, the timeline of, where the pandemic seen us from start to now. I think that's so important. And I think that's very, as such key points in relations to understanding what's happening, but not being a knee, doing a knee jerk reaction yeah. of just solidifying, going, okay, is this now written or is it just speculation? Yes. Um, what's that communication piece? And I think, as you said, even if you don't have anything, any good news or any news at all, just keeping that communication level and, of comfort and, for people yeah totally and and being part of groups where you can collaborate connect you know and find out what else has happened because sometimes as, as business owners it can be a lonely place right mm -hmm. so the more we can connect and and check in with with others in the industry it's a great way to to stay connected so that's huge yeah. um so leading into then that the next question is what would be some um, couple of pieces of of advice uh, that you would like to share with the audience around these current current times? Um, stay connected yep. with the people um, as, that, that are almost waiting to hear from you or, or wondering where you sit on this side mm. of the fence, but also not in a way that alarms people. And <laughs> so it, it's just trying to find, and, and everybody's different. So I feel blessed because I know my clients and I know my tenants. So I've got those relationships with them. I know which people probably need to hear from me more than the others. Um, the ones, you know, the certain things to say. So it's being careful, the advice that you're giving, the, the sympathy or the empathy that is needed definitely in this time for people, um, people's mental health. So just checking in and offering um, support, not being afraid with what the answer is going to be. I think there's a lot of uh, you know scared conversations around how people are suffering or how people aren't dealing, but um, just be open to hear that answer and and know that you can't fix it for all those people, but you just you can listen. So I think this comes back to so important in developing a relationship with your clients. Yeah, you know, and what you've done over the years is is really gone deep with that relationship. So when yeah. these times come up you can have those hard conversations. You can have those, you know, if you didn't have the relationship, it might be a little bit confronting, but hey, you know the how best to communicate, you know when best to communicate, you know the different strategies yep. to to communicate effectively. And so that space from, from your business model is about building those relationships. I think that's a huge takeaway for everyone to, to be aware of is how are you continually developing those relationships with your clients? So because this is not going to be the last time or last rodeo that something, no, maybe not like this, but a, a different instance that we need to really come back to those relationships and go, hey, listen, I'm here for you. I'm checking in. This is what yeah. the situation is and these are the next steps. And I think the other side of the changes and the advice for what's happening now, I know people are already talking about it in the industry, is that maybe some of these practices that we're um, putting into place now will, will flow through into the future. So it, it's, it's a game changer. Some of the, the systems or the virtual opportunities that we're seeing now um, to take into the future to make life easy for everyone. Do you see that? Do you see that uh, coming in as, as, we, as, you know, lockdown and isolation start to release? Do you, do you feel that we'll continue some of these systems and services? Where appropriate. I don't think there's a blanket rule across um, virtual inspections or virtual tours because um, that also kind of disrupts some of my values of, of meeting people and having that touch point and that one-on-one -on -one conversation or being available to them in you know both landlords and tenants. But certainly some of the technology with, and I've had some 
awesome photos and videos sent to me from tenants and I know and trust that what they're sending to me um, and what I'm passing on is like, you know, the, the real deal. Yeah. So again, it's just no blanket rule, but everyone's different. So there's certainly going to be a bunch of um, properties that might need, you know, more regular check-ins or if you can't, you can't get to them now because of isolation, you'll, you'll reschedule for three months. And then the others that, you might not need to go back to for another six months because of that relationship. So, so true. Yeah. So true. What are, what are some of the things that you are looking forward to uh, to do uh, once all this uh, starts to when we can get out and, and get amongst it? What are you looking forward to do? Um, I think just walk around freely and <laughs> and people watch and see you know see the world doing its normal thing. Mm. Um, I, well, I'm not really a big shopper, but I, you know, I can't wait to go to the shopping center and have a coffee and a cake and just to chat to people. Just, I think that feeling of freedom to just wander around and, and do as you please. Um, I'm looking forward to the parks being open as well, obviously, because it's hard for kids. There's only so much walking and, and bike riding that you can do, but they're really missing so an interaction with other kids. So, yeah, I can, so, so true. also for me, I can deal with it because, <laughs> but it's for the kids, you know, they're, Yep. They're struggling. They're really struggling. So. Yeah, no, totally, totally. So how can the, how can the audience, how can the listeners uh, find out more about you, your services and uh, to get in contact, where would you recommend? Um, my Facebook, uh, either my business or my personal page. I'm always open to um, new friends and new connections. Um, in terms of the goals tribe, the social the social events. I've been on a couple of those Friday night, five o'clock drink <laughs> events. And I think that's a really fun way to kind of let your hair down and just, you know, be yourself, you know, aside from everything else that you do. I love it. Five o'clock. Boom. Yeah. It's, love it. it's time. Love it. So, um, yeah, just the normal social media or website, um, touch points. I will, I have worked at home or in my home base office for the last five plus years, but looking forward to moving into a central office space um, in the, in the coming months, which will be a big step for me as well. And take me again out of that um, comfort zone to be in a work environment where there's other businesses or other people. So that who knows where that will take me as well when I've got more employees. And, yeah. <laughs> And, 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 and yeah, right. And, and, and as you, you know, your steps, your stages, as you go through continually to, to grow the business and, you know, there's some great opportunities out there for you. And obviously the, within the industry, and as you said, you're moving into, you know, potentially into a, a new office. Um, and as the team grows as well, is there any other uh, goals or aspirations that you go, yep, that's, that's where I'd like to, to take the business. Is there anything else that, uh, or anything else you'd like to share with us this afternoon? Um, not really. Uh, I guess, yeah, those, those things that I wrote down that I was thinking about when I'm thinking about myself and, and the future for me, it's just around that growth, um, building on what I have to teach somebody else that comes on, or anyone else who comes into my team about um, that, that different, different approach to property management that I think um, some people aren't really aware exists. They don't know what they're missing out on potentially. So true. And I think that's the essence of property management, which I think you've nailed is that service is that personalized service is about building that relationship. So go and have a conversation with Gab, check it out. Hotproperty.com.au H O T T property.com.au check her out socials um, on the social media and uh, Gab really appreciate your time and, and your words of wisdom and, and just, how are you doing things a little bit differently and your expertise this afternoon? Thank you so, so much. Thanks for having me. <laughs>